everyone, Bryphone here, back with another one. Today, we're going to relay some Kerberos. Well, why do I need to relay Kerberos? I can just relay NTLM. Well, what if you can't relay NTLM? What if you can't relay it to a certificate authority? What if they've selectively turned it off in the environment? So this is a real possibility. People are starting to harden things. Uh, they've realized that if they go to their CA and they turn off NTLM and the negotiated providers for CertServe, that they can minimize some of these attacks, especially the Active Directory Certificate Services relaying attacks. Well, we're going to relay Kerberos to Active Directory Certificate Services and show you a couple ways where you can still get certs and you can still move around and you can still do privilege escalation here. So let's start with the first one. The first one is DNS. We're going to use a tool called Man in the Middle 6 to spoof DNS and then that's going to force Kerberos to come to us so we can relay it. Uh, to start, we will start with Curb Relay X. This is a tool by Dirk Jan, and it uh, essentially will relay Kerberos, much like NTLM Relay X, to wherever we tell it to go to. So we're going to start with our Curb Relay X here. And we've got Python 3, Curb Relay X. Our target is our CA. And then we have an Active Directory Certificate Services, and our template is a machine account. We're going to be getting a machine account to start. The next thing we want to turn on is MITM6. So we will turn on this first, make sure it's going, and then we'll turn on MITM6. And MITM6, we're going to relay with MITM6 to our certificate services, back to us actually. So there we go, that's going. And you can see some things are already grabbing IPv6 addresses. But how this works is the host grabs an IPv6 address and then it uses the DNS from that IPv6 address to be relayed back to us. So we'll come over here to Windows 10 host 4 and we're simply just going to renew the IP, right? I'm just going to hit IP config renew 6. This is just to speed the process along. Eventually it would do this on its own. So there we go. We're renewing our IPv6 and then we come back over here to Kali and we can see we now have host win 10 host 4 right there and then over here on curb relay x we have some certificates so we can stop these we'll stop my m6 we'll stop curb relay x and let's create some files it's created these unknown files.pfx right here well this doesn't tell me the username i probably need the username to log in so what i can do is i can use open ssl for that so I'm going to go ahead and do OpenSSL, and then we'll do PKCS12, which is the type here. Let me just go ahead and copy this in. So we'll do PKCS12. We want to do unknown as our file type and the number. So the latest one is fine. We'll do 9221.pfx, and then we're just going to grep for subject, right? So we'll grep. Little pipe to grep for the word subject because that's what we want to know. What was the certificate subject here? So we'll go ahead and hit this a couple times, and there we go. We can see our subject is CN equals win 10 host 4. So we definitely have a machine cert. Well, so now we can authenticate to that host with a machine cert and maybe get the hash and then do something with it. So for this, we'll use netexec. So we're going to go netfx or netexec, and we're going to use SMB. So we'll do netexec, SMB, win 10 host 4. We're going to do the PFX cert that we just had. We saw our PFX cert is 9221, so we can slash unknown 9221. And then we're just simply going to give it the username. The username in this case, because it's a machine account, will be win 10 just exactly as we have it in our subject, win 10, post 4, but then we add a dollar sign because it's a machine account. It always has a dollar sign. So now we can give it something, but in this case, we'll just do verbose just to see that we were able to successfully log in and get the hash. So we'll do verbose here. I left a flag. It's double. So we do that, and we can see right here we have a ccache file that it is cached. Uh, it has 
told us we have ASREP encryption key right here, the TGT, the recovered NT hash if we want to move to that. And then we have successfully authenticated using the certificate. So we've authenticated with our machine account. We can do more with that if we so choose. But from this point, most people will opt to move to the hash, right? Because it's just easier in a lot of cases. Okay, so that is DNS relaying. Let's do a different form of relaying. This is kind of a newer one. And we're gonna use Responder for this. So we'll go ahead and clear this out. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of the certificate files. So we'll do rm-rf star unknown, get rid of those. That way it's clear. And we're gonna, in this case, use Responder and we'll completely get rid of MITM6. We don't need MITM6. So in the newer versions of Responder, and I'm talking the ones that you get from GitHub and you compile yourself, there are versions that allow you to specify the name that Responder will use. And what we want to do is we want to give it the name of our certificate authority. So we want to get, do dash n here, and then we give it win22ca. That's the name I want it to spoof out. And I'm going to give it a v here for verbose. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do curb relay x again, but this time we're going to do a user template. So we'll just get back up here and we'll change it. Our template instead of being machine is now user. So this is a standard user template, right? So we'll go ahead and start responder now. And what happens here is it waits for the user to mistype something, typically in a browser. If they mistype a browser, it resolves the name and then it sends it back to it. So let's go over here to the browser, minimize this, minimize this. We'll open Chrome. And in here, we'll just do HTTP colon slash slash. Here is a typo, right? Simple, just that simple. Well, we just got a certificate because that user typed a typo. If we come over here to Cali, you can see it responded the spoofed answer name of win22ca and said, hey, here's the name, here's a typo. But no, that's actually win22ca. We come over here to Curb Relay X, we now have another certificate, unknown 0534. Go and stop that and we'll stop responder at the same time. We'll go ahead and clear this out so everybody can see. And we'll do the same thing we did before. We want to get some information on the certificate. So we'll come back up here to our open SSL. We'll look for our unknown, and then we're going to grab for subject, just like we did before. And now we can see our subject's CN name is Bruce Banner. So we got Bruce. That means we have a user certificate. Now, Wherever Bruce can log in, we can log in as him now. If he can log into a file server, if he can log into a host, we can now log in as him. So the workstation that that came from is the same one as earlier. So we're just going to log in as Bruce now. We're going to use netexec again. And we will this time run a command. So we'll go ahead and paste this in. And it's not win22fs. We can try win22fs here in a minute. But this one is 192.168.136.158. And we are using our unknown 534 PFX cert. And then we've got Bruce Banner, and we're just going to tell it to run DIR from the command line and see what it does. And it says pwned, and there we have our directory run from that host. Now, I will try the file server. I've had some issues with this. He does have permissions to do so. You could log in as Bruce here on the file server. If I just do 15 here, we'll see if it works. Probably won't. It's been throwing errors. Yeah, it threw an error, but it does say before I got there, you look close, it does say pwned, right there, pwned. So we know Bruce can log into that server. You just have to do some magic to, to figure out where that person can log in. So that's two forms of Kerberos Relay. We did DNS, and now we did this new form where we're responding with an 
a name and spoofing a name and sending that on to the CA. So that's the red. Now the blue. How do we detect this? So let's start with Mitem 6. If we come over here to Win 10 Host 4 and we go into our event viewer, there is a log in the system that can be found that shows when a host gets a DHCPv6 address. This is off by default. So in Microsoft Windows DHCPv6 client operational, there is event ID 51039. Now, if your environment doesn't get DHCP addresses from IPv6, this is a dead giveaway when Mitem6 is running your environment. Just realize it's Windows, DHCP v6 client and Microsoft Windows DHCP v6 client operationally. You'll need to bring that into your SIN. And then you can see if I refresh this, we can see right here is plumbed on the interface. You got this IP, right? So that is the catch from Mitem 6. You can send that to SIM. <clears throat> now, I just highly recommend you just shut off IPv6 if you're not using it. You don't need it. If you leave it on, there's a lot of things that could happen. Minum 6 can happen. There's lots of things that can assign IP addresses out there. So be careful with that. A couple of other things. We can come over here to our Elastic Sim and we can look for event code 3 and network type IPv6. This, is, this will show communication via Sysmon on IPv6, right? So the network type of IPv6, it will show communication Sometimes you can find the communication back and forth between the relay and the host with this, but just realize you're digging for this. This is a hunt. It's not an easy thing. Anything that was communicating with that, you may see, you may not. It really, it's an interesting kind of thing. I've had it sometimes point out the relay. I've had it other times just never show anything. So the better detection is that DHCP log. Now, the usage of the certificate. This is the best method to know, hey, somebody logged on with a certificate. And that is event code 4768 and win log event data cert serial number existing or certificate thumbprint existing. Now, if we take a look at our domain controller over here, we can see someone logged in to the domain with a certificate and that was Bruce Banner. Right there, Bruce Banner, he logged in. So that is how you catch them logging in with the certificate that they have stolen. Now you can look for certificates being granted, but in this case, we granted it to a machine account and a regular user account. If you're watching that, you're going to just see false positives all the time. If we had done this to a domain admin or a trusted machine like a domain controller, then yes, you want to have alarming when the certificate authority automatically grants certificates for that. All right, giving the red, the blue, the purple team view. Uh, we're going to be playing a little game here with the channel. Every week, I'm going to be using new names. Right? It's not going to be Clint Barton every time. As you see this week, it's Bruce Banner. I need you to tell me who these people are in the comments. Yeah, who is Bruce Banner? Put it in the comments. If you're the first one and you do that 10 times, each time you get 10 points, whenever you get 100 points, I'll send you some hacker stickers. So just a fun little contest. Also, if you guys like the channel and you like what you see here, come see me live at a SANS class. I can teach you a lot more purple team and a lot more of these techniques and how to detect them in a class, right? In a structured class. I can also show you some of the techniques I don't put on YouTube because I need them for my day-to-day -day operations, right? So I've got a couple courses coming up here. Got uh, San San Antonio and Sans Orlando. Please come see me in class. Uh, it's a great time. Uh, students always love it, and it's a very fun class, and you can come try to win our coin. All right. Once again, thank you very much. Hack the planet to defend better.